Have you ever thought about failure from a different standpoint? Because the thing is, you will fail, but it's not that big of a deal. I had a very interesting conversation this weekend with someone that I'm working with. It is their problem is having undesired outcomes. Big, big, big freaking party. Big, big problem. Big, big problem. And we were talking about it, and it was like, well, it's okay to fail. And they were like, no, it's not. Not in my family. And then it's like, oh, here comes the tribalism. Here comes the issues. Here comes the family tree crashing into the middle of your success. You know, this is why you're going to fail, and it's not that big of a deal. It's part of the grand design. I want you to think about something. Everyone that hears this video has failed on a massive level in their life and then think two shits about it. And they're going, whoa, 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 hold up, Glenda, no, no. If I had failed in my life, I would know. You have failed massively in your life. Massively, each and every one of you out there, I am talking about literally falling on your ass. That's right. When you were learning to walk, you failed over and over and over. Then one day, those little wobbly legs, they got a little firmer. Those little shaky steps, they became a little bit more sure. What is the difference from failing at that point and failing now? You've learned shame. You've learned embarrassment. You've learned hurt feelings. The failing process hasn't changed. How you relate to the failing process has changed. That's the problem. It's not the failure. You've done it before. You're going to do it again. You're going to keep doing it. The problem is how you look at the failure. Right now, my shit is raggedy intentionally. Yes, I know. It's like, what, what, what? I am putting out all kinds of stuff. Pushing the envelope. Pushing the comfort zone. Just going for it because... I learned from doing 30 days to 2,500 bucks, there is a great deal of growth in failure. Now, it's going back to when you were failing massively as you developed as a human being. From the ages of, you know, when you were an infant, a few weeks, up until roughly 16, 18 years old, an incredible amount of physical, mental, perspective and spiritual growth occurs. When you're young, everything's brand new. When you're young, everything is a challenge. You have to learn how to do this. You have to learn how to do this. Growth, growth, growth. But if you weren't failing, you wouldn't grow. Think about that. You cannot grow without failure. It's impossible. You can't do it. From putting a man on the moon to inventing drugs that saved lives and during the clinical trials people died people did not get the proper well the desired outcomes they were like well okay that combination of this drug doesn't work so let's move on to this one and then they came up with a combination that worked but people died in the process you know and people are like well that's unacceptable see this is what's going to keep you from being happy Notice I didn't say rich, I said happy. Happy is an inside job. If you cannot get out of your way of going through the failing process and you're trying to look clean, crisp, always on point, never embarrassed, your shirt's never dirty, you don't get sweaty, you don't play in the dirt, you're always immaculate because you, my friend, are more interested and in love with image than you are with substance look at a house when it's being bought or built I should say built look at the house when it's being built it's not all that pretty I mean it's the raw frames wood they don't even put stuff on it it rains it rains all throughout the house it's water pooling up on the floors then step by step it becomes beautiful but there's a period of ugliness failure not looking so good 
that happens before it, get, it starts looking good. And that's the substance part because you cannot have substance without failure. You cannot have it. You, it's not going to happen. And maybe you're like, well, you know, uh, Glendon, I don't agree with that. Because there are many people who refuse to accept the path to success is not sexy. It's not sexy. Success happens when a, when a diamond's being made. It is under thousands of pounds of rock. It's dark. It's gloomy. It's cold. That's where it happens. That's where that diamond's formed under the most harshest conditions. It's not sexy, it's not pretty, and a diamond in its natural state is actually quite ugly. Many people don't even know what they look like in their natural state. They're like, oh, that's a rock. And this is the thing that is killing people because part of failure is taking some chances. I buy eBooks and books, and I have like four books on the way that I bought on Amazon this weekend. And I have put myself in the mindset that this book that I paid, one book, most of them, yeah, because they were on Kindle and they were like 10 bucks. So I went ahead and got the $3.99, one, you know, one cent penny book and $3.99 shipping. I am of this. If it takes me five, six hours to read each book and I pull one ideal out of that book, that's a win. But one of the reasons that you cannot win is you're looking for massive results, massive change in a minimal amount of time. And that is how marketing gets you because, hey, you know, if you do this, like let's take something that works really fast, but the amount of effort that goes into it is massive. P90X, guy put it out years ago, put it out there, show people getting results. It works and it's very quick. You know, and when you think about it, what you can do in three months, but let's talk about that. For three months, you're working your ass off, you're eating right, you're doing this stuff. So there's a massive amount of effort that goes into the, the thing. And I've seen people doing it and doing it in front of their television and doing all these things. And it works, but it takes an, a tremendous amount of consistent effort. You cannot get around this stuff. Time, effort, putting forth a vigorous response to failure. I'm going to tell you a little ugly little story. And th this one's kind of cool. There was someone that when I first started this YouTube channel that I was trying, I was trying everything. Because when you're like doing something new, you're hungry, you're just like, well, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. And I tried to get this person to help me with the video channel. Because what I was going to do was a series of interviews. If you remember that scene from uh, was it Top Gun, uh, You Can't Handle the Truth with Jack Nicholson. Um, I was, no, I don't think that was Top Gun. I think that was something else. I am not sure. But it had uh, Tom Cruise and Nicholas, Jack Nicholson. I know that much. And You Can't Handle the Truth. And I was going to do a skit. And I wrote it up. And I was trying to get people to help me. And it was just like, well, it, it was just so much, well, um, I don't know about that. Well, how many people will see it? It was so many things. It was just like, it's a simple video. I don't get that many views. It's not like the world's going to see. All of the things was like, uh, I'm a little scared. I don't want to look bad. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't trust you. It was no, 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 no. I mean, it got so bad because I didn't have a video community at the time. Now, it's funny. If I wanted to do something like that, I have people I can use. I just moved on and just went and just that's why you only see me in these videos because I spent weeks trying to get people to help me. Well, the person I went through that was the most scaredy. I like someone to put in the comment their inner scaredy cat. Her inner scaredy cat is her outer scary cat who gave me the most shade. I wake up this morning. And this year is really interesting. This is a year of apology. I've had several people apologize to me for some bullshit they've done to me. It's kind of funny. I mean, it's just like I got another one this weekend. I was like, didn't see that one coming. And this person is in my inbox. Hello, Glendon. Hello. And I'm like, you know, because that's how it was. Hello, bunch of L's and O's. And I look at the date, and the last time I communicated with this person was 2009. 
on Facebook. I've seen them around, but, you know, we really talk. And it's like, hello. And I look at it, and I start reading, and it's like five paragraphs. And at the top of the paragraph, uh, life has been unkind to me, blah, blah, blah. Got laid off, blah, blah, blah. And some other stuff, and some other stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just looking at this, and I'm like, what does this have to do with me? I'm sorry you got laid off, but that's really not my problem. Then, at the last paragraph, there it was. I have this wonderful ideal for a YouTube channel, and I would love for you to help me. Could you come over for dinner so I could pick your brain? I just sat there and looked in, looked out over my desk into the window and was just like, you must be shitting me. I literally begged this person to help me and was refused. Now, this is how I roll. I'll ask you to help me. And if you say no, or if you even act funny, I'm not going to out you. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm, I'm just going to keep fucking moving on. Because, you know, if I can give you any piece of advice, it's just keep moving. Don't stop when this stuff happens. Just keep moving. And I was like, okay. Picked my face up. Went on. I was like, she ain't going to do this. Saw, saw her at events and stuff. Just never mentioned it again. It was like, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. I got my big boy pants on. This is life. Get your chin up. Keep moving. And I never said anything to her, never treated her any kind of way. But I got offended like a motherfucker when she's going to have the amenable fucking gall ask me for a favor. So this is one of those moments where I was just... <laughs> when I'm mad, I can write like 3,000 words an hour. I mean, it just like, you must be fucking... And yeah, there was, there was fuck in there. There was fuck in there several times. You must be fucking kidding me. When I needed you and I thought you were my friend and I decided that you were not my friend based on your actions, how dare you come to my doorstep, hat in hand, begging for a fucking favor. Do me the honor and have the integrity to treat me like I treat you. I didn't go off on you. I didn't say anything to you. I left you the fuck alone. And I, you can do the same for me. And that's how I went down. Because it was like, you got to be kidding me. I have a saying, and I've had it for a long time. If you don't walk in the rain with me, I'll be damned if you don't drink lemonade in the sun with me. It's not happening. It's not happening. I'm not going to hate you. I'm not going to castigate you. I will not dog you out unless you give me cause. And she gave me cause to dog her out. And I did. I went hard. Then I get this wimpy ass little email like, my life is horrible. Fuck your life. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. See, this is why I keep telling y'all, keep hustling, keep pushing, don't fucking stop. Because if you keep going and you keep failing and you keep getting up and you keep failing, one day you're going to fall down and you're going to get up so quick, you're going to be like, whoa, where did those muscles come from? You're going to be like a fucking cat. You're going to be falling and you're going to land on your feet and you're just going to keep moving. People are gonna be like, whoa, is that cat man? Is that cat woman? How the fuck did they do that? That there. That's what's gonna happen if you keep failing. You're gonna learn how to cope with failure and you're gonna learn how to get up very quickly. And it's gonna get to the point where it's not gonna bother you that much. Things that would humiliate me five years ago, I give a damn. Because I went down, I got back up. I went down, I got back up. You can do the same thing. And this is something else that's going to happen. Never notice this. If you keep on keeping on, don't give up. It's going to work out for you. It may not work out for you in like billion dollar status, but it's going to work out for you in a very positive and a very rewarding way. Because this is one of my code of ethics. If I don't fuck with you after you did something heinous to me, don't fuck with me. Because if you do, I'm going to get you. Because I left you alone. I didn't go in your sandbox. Don't come in my sandbox with some begging, whining, wimpy. Well, you know, it was in the past. And let's get over this. Not when you were heinous. No. I don't roll like that. So, you, by having your goals, by having your dream, by having your vision, you will shame people by your success and never do a mean or ugly thing to them. 
because, you know, I got email after email. I just stopped communicating because I'm like, there's no fertile soil here for us to plant any seeds that they're going to have a bountiful harvest because, see, this is the thing I know. And hopefully, you know, if you join one of my courses, you're going to learn how to do this. There's no such thing as absolute failure until you die. There is no such thing as absolute fail. Absolute failure is you did it and your life is fucking over. You have guys in prison, in prison, who have killed people and went in and, you know, I'm not going to get into rehab or whatever. I don't know about prison life, but these guys went in prison, killed people, got out of prison and went for the matter of a year or so, met someone, got married, built a fucking family. Yet your unprisoned ass out here with no restraints, no baggage, and you can't even find a Saturday night date. You know why? Because you're a scared little bitch. That's it. It's fear. It's fear. So if you do not stop at some point, and I can't give you timetables, I can't give you Tuesday, uh, Tuesday the 19th, I can't give you that. I can just tell you that if you don't stop, it will work out in ways that will blow your mind. People, like I'm telling you, I am not bullshitting you. I've had more apologies this year than I've had in my whole freaking life. Because uh, there's some shit that went down uh, with family and other stuff. And I just stayed my peace and I walked away. And I, I've learned that keep moving, staying busy, having goals, not allowing those trials and tribulations and pitfalls of life to make you become static. When static is you stop moving, you stop trying, you stop grooving, you just sit back and just kind of let life fuck you. You just become a life's pillow princess. You're just there getting fucked and like, I don't like this fucking, but since you know, if I don't move too much, it won't be so bad. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. You are supposed to be fucking life. You're supposed to have life in the buck. And if you don't know what that is in that country, you are supposed to be giving it to life and making life come and life love you long time. Not the other way around. And sometimes life's going to get you. It's going to get you. It's going to jump on your back. It's going to bite you on the neck. And it's going to rah. And you're going to hurt. You, it's going to happen. But once again, as I said before, there's no such thing as absolute failure if you don't stop. Only thing that's absolute failure is terminal illness and death. And I have seen many people live better with terminal illness than folks who were healthy. Living is not breathing. Living is trying and doing and moving forward. Just getting up every morning, that ain't living. You just breathing. And what you have with this, I'm afraid of failure, I'm afraid of looking bad, is many people who are living well within their potential. I don't want to live well within my potential. I rather push myself, fuck up, fail, fall down, be embarrassed, be hurt, have people laugh and point. Oh, he fucked up again. He, hey, I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to probably fuck up this year and I'm going to fuck up again and I'm going to do it intentionally. I'm going to do it intentionally because you learn more from fucking up than you do from success. Success makes you, success is nice. It feels good. Success feels like a nice fur coat on a chilly morning. It's just, oh, it's so warm. It's so nice. And failure is like that ice pick on your ass. Ah! But you know what? You feel it. All of your pain receptors in your skin are up. You feel it. You move. You take action because that pain pushes you to do something. Whereas success, success can put your ass to sleep. Success could be like a, a hit. Success could be like getting drunk one night. Next thing you know, you wake up and you're like, what the fuck happened? Pain? No, pain keeps you sharp. <laughs> it keeps you sharp. It makes you uh, very active. It makes you move forward. So with these lessons of being hurt and being put down and failing, there is grace and there is beauty if you do not stop. That's why failure is not that bad. And the, when it happens, it hurts. If it's acute, you feel it. You'll be down. You'll be depressed. Those are some honest emotions. Go through them. But don't stop. Don't just sit down and say, you know what, life? You win. No mas. I'm out. I am going to wear my I am a little scared little bitch t-shirt for the rest of my life. I'm not going to go on. I'm just going to stop and one day hope the pain 
will just stop hurting. I'm not going to try to make it stop hurting. I'm going to accept it and hope that it stops hurting and will share my story with anyone that will listen. I'll tell them how bad life is. I'll be a person that when folks see me coming, they're going to go the other way because they know I'm bringing misery to their life. They know that I'm bringing heartbreak and pain and some bullshit. Because if you spend more time talking about your problem than you do working on your problem, you are the problem. You are the problem in spades. And it's never, ever going to get any better until you accept the fact that you're the problem and you need to put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants, and step up in the life and say, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it one more again. And that's it. Because when you, I don't even know how I can just break this down, but when you really, really own your life and you just move forward and you start becoming a person that's living on intention and you're not really worried about what other people think of your intention. As long as you are clear with your intention and you're not infringing on the rights of other people, then go for it. Do it. Because here's a guy that, I mean, like I said, some shit just, like a lot of shit has gone down in the last few years. And I've had people step up, men and women, and like, look, I want to talk to you. The way that I treated you was fucked up. It was wrong, and I'm sorry. I respect the hell out of it because... So far, everybody's been sincere. Shit's kind of funny. Shit's kind of wild, really, when I think about it. And this is the thing. This is the thing that makes this so powerful. I didn't need it. I got past that point. I didn't need it. I was pretty much done with it. And it still came. And that's kind of one of the things that when you're holding on to certain things, you won't get certain things. Because I was like... I am not going to sit here, and that's why I don't fight with people on YouTube. That's why I stopped getting in these long, drawn-out debates with people I never met before on Facebook and just really started focusing on the people that matter, the projects that matter, and moving forward. And that came from failure, from doing stuff. And when you fail and you sit back and you analyze why you failed and you're like, okay, well, that didn't work because this was the wrong decision. Well, that didn't work because I didn't have the right information. And I didn't, why didn't I have the right information? Because I moved too slow and I didn't ask the right questions. When you start saying, I fucked up and the reason I fucked up is because I didn't do X, I didn't do Y, I didn't do Z. You no longer are a victim. You become your own personal hero. You become your own Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman, whoever you want to fucking be. If you want to be Batman, you're fucking Batman. That's who you become when you ask those questions. When you go in that space when there's no one around and you're looking at yourself and like, yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, I made a mistake. This isn't the way to go forward. When you can say that, and then the really crisp part of this, the crispy, creamy part of this, is when you can say that, own it and don't hate yourself that's another thing self-loathing it's very hard to become spiritually emotionally financially rich when you have self-loathing because you fucked up that's a whole nother video but you you have to get passed over these things that you you did wrong i mean it, you know I'll, I'll share some there's only been a few times in my life where i intentionally went after someone and i just told you about one of them I typically will walk away. Physical confrontation, whatever, I will walk the fuck away. But there's a few times, and I'll tell you this one that happened when I was in eighth grade, that when the injustice is so acute, you have to respond. If you don't respond, your life will be hell. This dude named Byron. And I was a little nerdy kid, if you hadn't guessed. I was uh, eighth grade, I was in the science commons, I was in my locker, and I didn't mess with Byron didn't touch Byron, never said anything about Byron, didn't talk about his mama, never saw his mama, but for some reason, he felt the need while my back was turned to kick me in my ass. I snapped. A few things happened. One, I found out that I was very fast because he started running and I walked him down. If you're in country, I'm going to explain it to you. Is walking someone down is when they got a sizable lead on you and you don't only catch them, you pass them. Because I caught him he thought he was going to get into the band area, and I walked him down, and when he turned, and he turned back, I was in front of his ass. Grabbed him, did a suit flex, broke his collarbone. 
Now, this happened. Now, guess who got suspended and guess who didn't? Miss Hawthorne running down the hall. He didn't do it. He didn't start it. His back was turned. If he didn't defend himself, he wouldn't have been able to come back to school. Byron got suspended with his broken collarbone and I didn't. What I learned from that is when you fight for yourself, when you stand up for yourself and it's not bullshit, you usually will win. And that's happened about six, seven times that I've had to do something like that. No ill consequences, didn't lose any sleep, and I meant to hurt his ass. There was no just, uh-uh, no. I was out for fucking blood. And I got him, and when I went up in the suplex and I heard the snap, and he was like all like this, and he was moaning and shit, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, and at that point, I decelerated and came out of it, and you know, what happened, what happened. I accepted it. But the thing is, you know, fighting someone on bullshit reasons exhausts your energy and it puts you in a state where you can lose, where you can lose a lot. Because essentially, when you are trying to be successful, you have to monitor your energy and you have to accept life the way it is, not the way that you want it to be. And you have to fight. <clears throat> you will have to fight for your success. So it will not come to you. It will not be given to you. You have to fight. Now, the backstory on the uh, broken collarbone deal is I started suddenly playing football because one of the coaches saw how fast I was. And um, I got my first little, you know, girlfriend, which is, you know, you get to talk to her and she lets you hold her books and be close to her. Back then, that was your girlfriend and shit. So all that happened because I stood up for myself true story I <laughs> stood up for myself didn't care what was going to happen I just know I could not let that go so when you fight make sure that you're fighting for something worthwhile make sure that you're not bullshitting and wasting your energy well, this is one of the reasons I tell people be really careful with family don't get caught up in that drama keep moving keep going keep pushing because you can waste so much time and energy in a vacuum in the area that is just not going to give you fruit it's not going to give you a good harvest you're just wasting your time and resources on bullshit but i'm here to tell you if you keep trying you will win one day because there's no such thing as absolute failure all right so be sure to get your free audio book make sure you join hustlers university and there's a few other goodies for you either here or here all right this is glendon and i'll see you on the good side